Hey everybody, welcome back to Insight Tennis Tour Stroke Series. My name is Rick Oldroyd. I'm the president and founder of Insight Tennis. I'm also the head pro. Today, we want to talk to you a little bit uh, about the serve. We're going to do kind of an introductory video to a series that I'm going to be doing on the serve where we're going to talk about some of the key elements of building a tour quality serve, an ATP tour level serve. There are some, some key things that all the best players in the world do and there are of course variations of these and each player varies it a little bit but there are certain concepts that are universal. That every single player in the world if they've got a good uh, consistent powerful repeating serve you're going to see all of them uh, executing these concepts and so we want to talk a little bit about that uh, today and give you some some key elements to building uh, a tour level serve so obviously first and foremost we want to make sure you have the right grip if you don't have the right grip then it's going to get you into all kinds of trouble when you come back around to impact because the racket is going to be in the wrong uh, position and the angle of the racket is going to be wrong and that creates all kinds of problems as well so there are a lot of players who start out with almost a forehand grip and the problem with this grip is yes you can hit the ball over the net like that but as you start to hit harder and harder it's much more difficult to create topspin it's much more difficult to keep the uh, ball in the court and this is the grip that produces the old frying pan look back here that we've all seen before okay so I advocate uh, the continental grip Easiest way to find that is just left hand on the racket to throw the racket, shake hands with the racket, and that's pretty close. If you notice that uh, my index knuckle is on bevel number two and the pad of my hand is also on bevel number two. So again, that's pretty close to a continental. There are some slight variations, but for what we're going to be doing right now, I think that's just fine. Uh, and for 90% of the players out there, that's the grip that they use. So start with the continental grip. The second thing we want to look at is the stance. Okay, where do we want our feet? Well, you have probably seen on the tour that some players start with what they call a platform stance and they don't move their feet and then there's another one which is called the pinpoint stance where they bring their their foot up to the other one. So the platform stance, as you've probably seen, is essentially a relationship of the left heel and the right toe lined up in general. Like there are just some, a few variations of that, that's fine. But that's where we're going to start with. And then the pinpoint stance is you're going to start about here, but then as you're getting ready to serve, you're going to bring your right foot for right-handed players up to your left to, to your left foot. So they're together. Now you've probably seen Roddick where he starts with his with his feet, you know, about here and then brings him here. You've seen Monfils with his feet already together. There's different variations, but I advocate less is more. Why introduce another variable if you don't need one? And I think the best server in the world right now, bar none, is Roger Federer in terms of placement and variety and so forth. And he has that platform stance. So, Connell grip, platform stance is the second piece. Hands are gonna be essentially resting here in front of them. Okay, now, this, the third piece of this is going to be what we call the trophy pose, okay? Now, it doesn't matter how you get into the trophy pose. As long as you get there, I, you know, it just doesn't matter how you get there. You've seen Roddick um, where he just picks the racket up, right? Just picks the racket up and gets into the trophy pose. You've seen Federer where he comes down here and his arm goes clear back here and then comes back up here, right? But he gets into the trophy pose. For me, in my opinion, in my over 20 years of teaching, I've found that in order to create a repeating swing, you want to have as, as few of variables as you can possibly have. So one of the things that I advocate on this is that the easiest way to get my racket into the trophy pose is to allow it to just be natural. So once I've got my feet in that platform stance, my hands are resting here in front of me, I'm going to have my weight pretty much on my right foot, and then I'm going to shift it obviously. But my hands are going to come down together, and I advocate 
having the right arm stay down while the left arm goes up. So my hands are going to just come down together and I'm going to toss the ball and then my arm is just going to come up right here to the trophy post. Okay, so let me do that again. So I'm right here, boom, and I'm in that trophy post. Now, again, the bottom line here is it doesn't matter how you get there. You absolutely have to get there. It's critical that you get to that position with your knees bent, good torso rotation and trunk rotation away, and in that trophy pose. How you get there, again, doesn't matter. But that position now, I'm gonna be up on my toes, my knees are bent, okay? So it's gonna look just like this. That's the pose I want, right there, okay? So here, toss, boom. And I notice I'm up on my toes, right? That pose right there. Now. From that position, we want to talk about what happens next. The racket drop, this is probably one of the things that I see out there that's the biggest mistake and probably the most widely misunderstood technique on the serve is the concept of scratching your back. You've heard, you've probably even heard people say that at a high level, scratch your back, scratch your back, you want to scratch your back on the serve. When in reality, the tour players, if you watch carefully, you will see that they do not scratch their back like this. So the racket doesn't travel back here so that you would see it on the other side of their body here. Or if you were to take a picture back here, you wouldn't see their racket this close to their back, scratching their back. So what do they do instead? All right, so with the racket drop from <clears throat> this position here, when I get into that good trophy pose, right instead of dropping this way i want to drop my racket literally back this way okay now you may have to make a conscious effort to do this there's a very very important reason why the pro, pro players and tour players do this because it maintains this 45 degree angle which is a huge power source if I break this down, I've lost a tremendous amount of power. If you've ever watched a baseball picture, pitcher, when they get their arm back here, you'll never see this. Their arm is here, and then it rotates back this way and comes around and throws. And this is exactly the same concept in the surf. So what you're going to do is when you get into that trophy pose, you want your racket in this position and instead of dropping here allow the racket to just go back here so it's going back this way and then as it comes around now it's really dropped my 45 degree angle is maintained I'm going to come around I'm going to supinate right where the racket is going to be outside of my hand slightly and then I'm going to come up to impact on edge and I'm going to pronate to impact. So let's do that again. From this position, I'm in the trophy pose, right? I'm gonna allow my racket to drop back this way, release and come around. I'm doing this in slow motion, obviously. I'm gonna supinate, then I'm gonna rotate up to impact. Remember, wrist and arm rotation on edge. Last second, I pronate release through and then drops to the left side of my body now we're not going to go through a lot more detail than that right now um, because i think that's plenty to start building the foundation to put together a tour level serve so once again by way of review what you're going to want to do here start with your feet in the platform grip or excuse me the uh, continental grip Platform stance, I'm going to do it a little closer here so you can see. Right toe, left heel, okay? Arms resting out in front, hand underneath, ball in the tips of your fingers, not in the palm of your hand. Tips of your fingers. Now, when how you get to that trophy pose absolutely does not matter, but you got to get there. So here, I advocate both arms down, toss the ball, and just bring it up to here, okay? So here's what it's going to look like. Right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get up on my toes and I'm going to bend my knees, rotate my body away, 
That's the perfect trophy pose that I want. From there, I'm just going to drop my racket, remember, not back this way, not scratching my back, but actually this way, right, from this position here, you're gonna see that the players drop the racket back this way, maintaining that 45 degree angle with their arm, like a pitcher in baseball. And then it's going to come around, it's going to supinate, so let's do that again in slow motion. So I'm here, drop back, comes around, supinates here, rotate back to impact. See, I, you can see I'm coming into the ball on edge, all the pros do this, right? On edge, and then last second, I'm going to rotate to impact, right? And that's the pronation, so supinate pronate, release through, and I'm going to finish about in this position, and then the arm just comes down, falls to the left side of my body. Okay? Those key elements right there, review this video over and over. If you do nothing but those five things that I just illustrated, you're going to have a very solid serve. Okay? The wrist and arm rotation, and the last thing that I will say, soft, soft hands, little squeeze at impact, in fact, let the impact naturally allow your hand to squeeze as a product of the impact instead of you thinking squeezing, because then you're going to maybe do it too tight. You want to have the racket soft enough in your hand that it doesn't come out of your hand. That's, that's all you want. Just as soft as you can be without having it come out of your hand. Nice and relaxed and loose. Wrist and arm rotation supinate remember supinate wrist and arm rotation to pronate and then release through the ball if you'll do that you're going to have a pretty solid serve clearly there's some other things we can work on we don't want to get too much information but that's going to help you tremendously start to build a very very solid foundation for a tour level serve hopefully that's going to be helpful for you if you like this video again please click the link below so you can subscribe to our channel and get all the new content that's coming out. We're constantly doing new videos. We're constantly going to be uploading new content and new information. Check out the website at Insight Tennis. The YouTube channel, of course, is Insight Tennis as well. Subscribe to the channel, like the video, share the video, and send in your videos. I say this in every one of my videos. We've got an opportunity right now to have you guys uh, anywhere in the world take video of yourself. If you're struggling with your game and you're not sure why you can't get any better, I can almost assure you in over 20 years of teaching this game that it's biomechanics or either improper understanding of correct technique and biomechanics or improper implementation. And if we can help you to understand firstly what you need to be doing and secondly, how to implement that, then we can really help you with your game. And uh, we definitely want to do that. We'll respect your privacy. We'll certainly not send your videos out or put them out on the internet if you don't want that. But we do want to help you out. So send in your videos, like the channel, um, and subscribe to the channel rather, visit the website. And as always, thank you for your time. We'll see you out there on the court.